because I calculate at the end of the game, I was calculating the worst case scenario. I was like, I could die here. <laughs> I got lucky and didn't die. Hey, everyone. Uh, we're here with a very special guest today, BDW. How's it going? Good. I just came out of a game that was really scary against... Only the 250 ELO players. You, you can't underestimate those people because if you let your guard down, they will get you. <laughs> oh, I've lost to plenty of them. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, very scary. Uh, just can someone in the chat just let us know how the sound is? That would be cool. But yeah, we're going to look at a couple of games today. Well, definitely one, two if we have time. Can't hear BD. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll turn him up. Uh, test one, two, three. Hopefully this is good for the audience. <laughs> Where is the sound settings? All right, try talking now compared to my voice. All right, test one, two, three. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Hello, everyone. Okay, seems like it's better now. But I got you on the... What do, you, what do you mean on the big screen, <laughs> Geo? <laughs> okay, cool. Sound is good. Okay, so we have a lot of questions for you. Ah, uh, yes. I guess, question. I guess the first one we can start with is the one that most people want to know is, why do you upgrade sponsors so much? So I'll start by saying... Out of the top, out of the top twenty players, most of them upgrade association as like, like ninety percent, eighty percent. But you're over here upgrading sponsors like sixty percent of the time, and association like twenty percent of the time. What is it that you see about sponsors that we don't? So when I do upgrade sponsors, it's usually because there is a card that. A sponsor to a card, and I really like it. There, there's a big three. There's Explorer, there's Science Lab, and there's Talented Communicator. And the other reason is I don't like upgrading association because you've become it is easy to become dirt poor when you <laughs> donate so much. <laughs> because yeah, the first first donation is great, but then it starts getting worse and worse, especially in two player when the track is gone so mm -hmm. you can't choose donations and a three player it's probably the best because you have the whole track and if you're the only one with association upgrade you have free reign but yeah. in two player you don't get to have free reign as easily okay so even if you don't, didn't have one of the big three cards are you still upgrading sponsors over association or it just depends eh. You sh sponsors is very finicky because it's very dependent on the row and if I have other upgrades I really need to do. It's supposed to be a le lesser priority compared to the others. Build is just too important. Cards mm -hmm. needs to be done eventually. Animals is very conventional for that one rep. But when the cards and positions align, sponsors it is. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, first question from the chat. Graham asked, uh, do your priorities change when there are two CPs for getting four partners who's depending on, depending on the map? Is he? Oh. Uh, I have issues with Park Restaurant for this, and also Observation. Observation is a pretty scuffed map, <laughs> as the Swedish guy Jay Dansby would say. Um, I know that... It's there, and I accept the fact I'm not getting that, probably. <laughs> if it so happens that I upgrade association for whatever reason, because I need some partner zoos, or I need to race the track faster, 
great. But otherwise, it's not going to push me that hard if a partnership, a fourth partnership gets me to CP. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so I guess that means you think Observation Tower is the worst map in the game, just like uh, I, Yad does? Yeah, I used to think that Hollywood was the worst, and then when I thought about it, I was like, I don't know, Observation has it worse. <laughs> uh, reasons Observation is off. You get funneled into the Observation Tower, and even starting off there is very inflexible. If you have a one-hex animal you're kind of screwed. If you yes. have a water animal, you're also kind of screwed. <laughs> Would you start with, and, like, a two enclosure to fit a one-size animal in? Yes, and um, I'll get to this a little later if we get to talk about ice cream, but <laughs> it's, it's just to get to the range of the observation power. You need those two tickets to get that income boost because... At the start of the game, two tickets is going to equal one income, and that will add up. Mm. And it's just nice to get in there. Um, oh, and another thing I hate about Observation, the one rep location is in the worst spot it could be. True, it's yes. It's in a spot where you want to reserve an aviary. <laughs> and when you don't know if you want an aviary or not, you're very indecisive about do you want to build a not aviary in the one reputation spot because if you do your only saving grace is at the top where there's still rock and water mm. i generally plan my games that i always do want to build an aviary even if i'm only going to fit a shoe bill in there <laughs> okay that's a little <laughs> much but <laughs> just in case it's always nice to have that emergency aviary spot and I can maybe talk about emergency aviary spots if we have time, but probably not. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get started on one of these games. Uh, let's let's not reveal your card selection yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> okay, we're we're on Hollywood Hills, which yeah, I guess you'd be very happy playing this map because it's another excuse to upgrade sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I love spamming sponsors; it's fun. <laughs> Geo says. Uh, do you like the doubled money for when you struggle to get the money? So how often do you actually use uh, the five the upgraded sponsors just for money? It happens. <laughs> A lot, yeah. It, it might happen because I have some upgraded sponsor card that I want to play, but then something bad happened, like my opponent just got a project done, has another worker, and I kind of need to kill, break that worker. <laughs> so I'll just sponsor... Um, to break even with sponsors upgrade if I feel like I don't have too many sponsors to go through eventually because mine when you break with sponsors you are not playing a sponsor card and if you have too many piled up it kind of hurts in the long yeah. run <laughs> all right so on Hollywood Hills here uh, I'll just have a look at your opening hand um, there's a lot of green cards that's normally good but there's like a few too many I feel <laughs> so I, I'd oh, no. say you're definitely starting with Aquarium here. That's like an extremely good sponsor card. I'd also be very tempted to start with the Water Dragon because the sunbathing ability is quite good on this map and there's Asia in the conservation projects. What are your other two going to be, though? So, first of all, let's look at my scoring card. That's going to influence me a little. Mm -hmm. uh, what are my scoring cards. Ah, oh, yes, okay. Large Animal and Sponsor Zoo. Wow, okay. Yeah, okay, it's Sponsor Zoo. <laughs> that's all I want. It's simply Sponsor Zoo almost all the time. But, all right, so that's probably not going to change my selection. So, yes, you'd be right. I love the aquarium. It's just nice to toss out because it's a huge threat. There's water littered everywhere. You're probably going to find some water. The only catch is I'm going to have to get to Reputation somehow. Mm. Now, when you think about this aquarium, you need to mind your association. As you can see, my sponsors is at five, which is actually not not ideal not yet. The best thing in this situation because I would have to build first, and then I can associate for the two rep uni. But the problem is, it my opponent can just take the two rep uni, so I need a fallback. If okay. I try to build a thing on the one rep location, I can't play my water dragon. It needs water. 
So this is a plan that can just instantly break. However, if you notice through the cards, there's something that my opponent cannot deny, which is release the water dragon, because I can just build and play the water dragon and then release. Now, how do I get those sponsors out without breaking? You think I'd pass or play a science institute, but no. You will see later. Anyway, I okay. guess it's going to be the CK. Now, my fourth card. Uh, what would you think is my fourth card? <laughs> well, personally, I'd pick small animals because you're already starting with one and it'd be just a, like a quick association for two of them. But I noticed that you love release projects. Would you be keeping <laughs> two release projects? Um, the answer is yes, and there's... <sighs> Low Mountain Range is... I think, in general, the best release project, because there are too many big birds that are good to release. If mm. I toss out small animals in there, one, I'm already planning to release the water dragon, so it's going to be a bit too slow. Two, my opponent could leech off of it pretty easily if they just so happen to play a bunch of small animals, so that's too risky. Sure. So, of course, I'm just going to keep the low mountain range, hope that I find a big bird that works for it later. If not, it's not the worst deal, I'll just sell it. Yeah, you got sunbathing anyway, so it's not like a huge commitment. Okay, that is indeed yep, what you keep. Point. And you're All the right, first now, player. Uh, are there any... Okay. Yeah, go on. Um, I see a platypus. And platypus early game puts people on edge. <laughs> A little more than they should. Just pass if you get Venom. It's not the worst thing. <laughs> so, I mind this platypus. I eventually want it because it has water and it's an herbivore, which is on the test. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to build because I want to release this water dragon anyway. Now, I need to build a 2x and I build it on the clever spot because I'm not getting this aquarium in time and I would rather just play the water dragon release it because if my oh it takes the two rep you need i'm kind of done for mm -hmm. i was also noticing here this is a nice spot for the aquarium afterwards that curves around this water nicely yep that's something i kept in mind but i was also looking at these cards and i was thinking well there's a lot of water here but other cards like Archaeologist or Expert on the Americas, I'd rate pretty highly, even like Water Playground, but you went straight for the Platypus. That's yes, the first because, card you noticed. Uh, yes. Now, I did notice there was a Water Playground. I was like, ooh, that might be nice for your corner, but I'll pick it up later. Right now, I'm going to need a replacement for that Water Dragon after I release it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now, let's see what your opponent does. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> Yeah. But it was good to this still have the backup plan. Yes. So, of course, I play my Water Dragon, and he can't stop me. <laughs> yep, and uh, there's no birds in this play, so I guess you just sell the low mountain range yeah. now. Yep. Yeah, I can't bother. Okay. It's too much of a burden to try to carry it with me, because I'm not going to have an... <laughs> Very reasonable. Okay, your opponent snapped up the Archaeologist, which is what I thought. So that, that was a good reason to start with the Science Uni as well for them. Yeah. Um, now, I don't rate Archaeologist too highly on Hollywood. It's got some decentness, but there, you would usually like to cover the one rep spot because it's closer to the H's. If you try to start at the top, it's a hassle to get down there because you would probably want to start at the top, double down on the rep, and then get your second worker flip very easily right so i'm not a big fan i was like yeah whatever you can have it yeah on this map it's it's okay but nothing special um uh, all right we are going to see the release so something about your statistics i think i'm remembering this right i've been through the statistics of the top 20 players you release on average like close to one and a half animals per game uh, yeah, does that because... seem high to you um wise or no does it though? seem does it seem like a large amount compared to my average i know mine is very low but i'm releasing about half an animal per game so you're releasing about three times as many as me i am aware i'm on the higher end of releases because i don't 
I'm not a person who likes partnerships, so breeding programs tend not to be what I do. And then sometimes I have to ignore the base conservation because either they're out of the way or I know I'm just going to lose the race. So releases end up being the backup. And the benefit is I get the hexes back. True, yeah. Uh, okay, we've we've released the uh, Water Dragon. What's the first upgrade going to be? It has to be Bill because I'm going to r- run for those H's. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's an easy way to connect to three of them relatively early. I guess second upgrade you're looking at is sponsors. Yeah, it's something that needs to be done eventually on Hollywood, and it's probably best to hurt them later. Okay, your opponent plays the archaeologist. Nothing surprising. As you expect. And then the reason I built that two hex is I want that platypus. Yeah, like you just sussed the platypus. Um, Okay. Now, how are we going to get that? So I guess building is the next action and you see what sponsors you get. But I still imagine you'd want to play the aquarium before the platypus. Yeah, so ideally I find a sponsor with the H's to kill some time. If I don't get the aquarium in before the platypus, it's not the biggest deal. I would like to harass him with a venom and toss out an animal because it's better than waiting way too long. Mm Mm-hmm. So now I build and hope and pray I get a... Oh, this. Now, this is also a funny start. Yeah. (laughs) I can't believe we're both starting at the left. Oh, yes, it's because he has archaeologists, so it makes a little more sense. Yeah, I get Yeah, You want to leave your reputation open so you can archaeologist it all the time. I guess that does make sense, yeah. So now it's a race to those H's. I Uh, figure, eh, toss out a three hex. Maybe I'll find something that's a three hex. So I know it, there's a Duke flying there, but... It, eh. Is this going to be a three kiosk pavilion? Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, that's and very that's nice. Great find. Uh, okay, small question. Any reason the, like, the kiosk and pavilion aren't switched around in placement? Is that so you can put a kiosk where the build symbol is here? Yes, and if... I saw this mirror cat den, and I realized there's only one place for this mirror cat den. <laughs> it's at the bottom right. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, so it touches the chaos straight away. Okay, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, so oh. I love me a foreign institute. The problem is, <laughs> yeah, it's annoyingly a power six. <laughs> yeah, we're already like struggling to play all these now. But I guess the Meerkat Den can be played immediately, and then you probably get the uh, hand size unit. I can't uni. play the Meerkat Den. Oh, right. The rep as well, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So interesting to note, you took the five income over the second worker. Uh, because at the time, he had sponsors five, and he would most likely want to break it if he could, even if he had an archaeologist. I was kind of scared of that. <laughs> Fair enough. Plus, I need money. I wasn't sure if I was going to toss out that platypus just yet, because I do love an excuse to venom and harass my opponents a little. Geo in the chat says he tends to see a lot of pavilions on Hollywood Hills. I'm not sure how, how accurate that is, but maybe he's been watching too many of my games where I spam pavilions. <laughs> well, I, I love spamming pavilions in another map that's called Ice Cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Brilliant on that map. Robert in the chat says, you seem to take five money as a first reward in like 80% of your games. I have no stats to back that up, but is there any reason the, the money over the worker most of the time? Um, so if I'm too low on rep, I may have to take the worker, but the more ideal goal is to naturally get some rep from something. Yeah. Hopefully you get something like for an institute, spokesperson, um, some animals that give you rep, or just animals five upgraded enough times. Uh, get the one rep bonuses, and you should get your second worker naturally. Now, if you don't think you can do that, then you just have to take the worker. But my money income is just too conventional. Right. Okay, your opponent triggers the break. Uh, a little bit annoying. We have to ditch one of these cards. Okay, that's a tough call. Which uh, card do you discard out of these? Okay, so I think what triggered my opponent to... 
break was I kicked out my association, and he must have thought it was some sort of opportunity. And, yeah, sure, but he's also losing three cards, so whatever. But back to my situation, yes, this is tough. Now, if I were greedy, I would try to keep both the Aquarium and the Meerkat in, but I don't have time for that. That Platypus needs to be played eventually. So, and I also need that Bardage too. It's just too good. That was the whole point of passing the <laughs> Tarnax token. Mm -hmm. So, I grit my teeth, and after a lot of deliberation, I have to toss out the Aquarium. Meerkat Den has an herbivore tag, herbivores is on the test. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Just a bit unfortunate that they require three rep each. Because otherwise yeah. you could like play Meerkat immediately and be happy. It'd be a little too strong if you didn't have that, <laughs> have that requirement. <laughs> uh, Gio, the other map was Ice Cream Parlors, because you have all your kiosks from the, uh, the map, and then you put your pavilions next to them. All right, so this is the Foreign Institute. Uh, no surprises there. Yep, so I can potentially get my second worker this round. So if you look at this, I could take the two rep uni. I could pass oh. on animals or just wait on it for to be upgraded. Kill some time with animals, doing cards, build, and then association. I'm okay with those being power four. Um, but the numbers work out because I'm placing that mirror cat down where the one rep spot is. If my animal's upgraded, I get a rep. I get the two rep, rep uni. I get my eighth rep. So I have a clear shot to get a second worker. And okay. that's probably what I'm gunning for. Very reasonable. Okay, your opponent spends the next token to get their second uni. So no doubt they want to upgrade... Uh, probably build and animals, I'd guess. Or maybe build yeah, and sponsors just... or something. Yeah, it's something. But it's the one two unique combo that you should expect <laughs> yeah. in a standard game. Alright, so that means their sponsors upgrade is going to be delayed because if you upgrade sponsors, your cards is going to have problems. Okay, so. I decided I'm okay with passing on yep. animals because I only need to play blind. It's pretty whatever. Having everything else at power level 5 would be better because that Meerkat Den should be at power level 5 eventually. Also, just noting now that your opponent hasn't played in any animals yet. So while they have Archaeologist out, their income is pretty far behind already. Yeah, I think they they were very on edge about my platypus <laughs> and got too hyper focused on it because, as you will see, oh, oh wait, no, it's still it, oh, um, yeah, they draw probably the worst sponsor in the game, migration recording, but they also get a penguin pool, which is pretty oh, good. Come on, don't hate on migration recording. <laughs> well, I can't think of any sponsor worse than it, to be honest. <laughs> Is oh okay. Oh, sorry, you you love your release project, so you're probably over here thinking it's like an S <laughs> tier sponsor. <laughs> it's, okay, it's not the best one, but it's really nice to deploy a threat. <laughs> Reusable projects, I love them. What would you say is the worst sponsor in the game? Then I'm trying to think. What that is. Oh, Science Institute. Even when it's helping your science museum, science lab, all that, you'd rather just have a tech institute. Yes, true. Uh, for <laughs> federal grants, um, foreign institute, as I play, spokesperson, just something that does something else than be a fake to research uni <laughs> that doesn't help you get an upgrade. All right. That... Even in its best case scenarios, it's so bad. <laughs> That's a fair enough call then. <laughs> So migration recording is probably second worst then, is what you're saying. Hey, stop it, got it. <laughs> All right, All right. build action. Okay, so now I know why I didn't want to do the cards, because my goal is to get a second worker, and I'd rather not temper the row or temper the break. So I'll just get my sponsors from covering my last stage. And, oh, nice, I don't even need sponsors 5, I just need sponsors 4 to play my Meerkat in. Ah, yes, okay, because everything's covered, yes, brilliant. Uh, okay, uh, Julian in the chat saying that Okapi Stable's actually the worst, which I, I might agree with. Okay, yeah, I, I did forget about Okapi Stable. <laughs> it's 
like you play a sponsor to pay money to play more sponsors and you still need a trigger to do do it all it's and it takes up space in your map that's not really contributing to anything so you're risking running out of space and you can hit a dead end okay i i love the placement here leaving room for your meerkat den very nice yes sorry i got my cat running, the running around plan. the table people are also saying in the chat uh Free range monkeys is pretty bad. I kind of like that card oh. though. Okay, never mind. That's probably the worst. Really? It's between Okapi, free range monkeys, and Science Institute, and it's probably actually it's, I think closer to Okapi stable. Free range monkeys is a very close contender for worst Ooh. because I think the only good place for it is Silver, Silver Lake. Lake but yeah. Silver Lake is Silver Lake. It's... <laughs> Did not need the help. <laughs> so I guess you also think that's the strongest map in the game? Yes. I also hate that map so much. Me too. Because of how... Why does it have determination? <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> so yes, I do go with my plan. And I probably upgrade... It. Oh. So I guess I don't care. <laughs> You just, uh, you really want to get those sponsors out. But yeah, I, I did like oh, your plan with the animals earlier. Now I know why I did this. It's because I see a water playground, and I'm thinking, <laughs> that'd be nice to just play. So it's so a little bit greedy. Five. Yes. But my opponent probably, well, let's look at my opponent's map. Did he take, oh, wait, he started at the left. Um, It would be way too much to go all the way to the draw location and take the water playground, even that one rep location, because archaeologist, eh, he's probably not taking the water playground. I like the water playground just to toss out. Okay, but you also got rid of the aquarium, so, I mean, it's still alright, but surely a bit less appealing now. I still like it, <laughs> because if you notice, I can play the water playground, and touch the kiosk and the draw, and mm -hmm. draw the duke. And if you notice, the duke is extremely on the test. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got we got uh, two projects that it helps. Okay. Very reasonable. Oh, it also gives you a reputation, but you don't have enough money yet. Yeah, but that's okay. Maybe I just accept it. I don't need a second worker. Especially with that menacing sponsor reply from my opponent to me. Anyway, animals for him. Okay. I wonder, what's he going to play? Two petting zoos, worst case. And then I wonder, why is he not playing a second? Does he either not have one, or is he still scared of my platypus? <laughs> uh, okay. What are you thinking about the petting zoo animals in general? Uh, there's only one that makes you start with one petting zoo. Otherwise, you need two to even consider starting with petting zoos. That would horses, be the, the horse, yeah. A plus. <laughs> or, horse is just... It's the one that makes me consider starting with only the horse, and that's it. Because you're killing for rap in yeah. an early game. So, but but if you if you had two petting zoo animals in hand, you'd be tempted to start just depending on what else was in your hand. Yes. Now, if I have project animals, I it would be tough because I'm either getting a lot of money from those petting zoo animals. I actually do the test. It's a tough call. Okay. Okay, so I must have been a little worried that if I cars, he breaks. Yeah, I think so that's very reasonable, why... yeah. Yeah, so I want to ensure I get the Meerkat 10, Water Playground, and Duke. Yeah, and this is also going to help your income quite a lot, because it's giving you 6 appeal and 2 buildings touching the chaos, so that's very reasonable to spend an X token for that. Yep. Okay, lovely. Jackson. My uh, my animals want their breakfast, unfortunately, but they're going to have to wait. <laughs> okay, and you do pick up the uh, Duke. Very nice. And hey, if I find the release project, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a pretty decent one to release, yeah. 
I do find the Duke to be um, above average in terms of pure value because that one rep is so nice. Even if you don't have enough, um, two more monkeys and you're only getting one X token, it's an X token. You probably need those sooner or later. And seven tickets for paying about 25 bucks. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. You just need research. It's so easy to get. Yeah. Okay, we have another question in the chat. Apparently today you took, from the 2 CP reward, you took an extra worker instead of a card upgrade. How often do you find yourself doing that? Ah, uh, yes, there was one game where I had to do that, and it was very unconventional. I, I remember this, it either happened yesterday or the day before. This was on ice cream, and it was just to give myself a tempo. Also, ice cream in particular gives you 2 CP for game the last worker. Okay, so, so it's like a good reason to, yeah. Yes. Now, normally I don't do this. It's very rare I do this because I like three upgrades at least, the core three being build animals and cards. Yeah. And there might not be time for me to get a fourth because I might just forego my partnership because I'm like, I don't like con in partnerships, <laughs> usually. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, um, at, in that game... The second worker would get me a partnership, and then I would have enough time to get the second partnership and just have the core three upgrades. Yeah, and that's probably probably enough. Well, if if you're only going three, so then you're skipping out on association and sponsors is what you're saying most of the time. Yes. Um, cards is almost always too important to forego. It doesn't have to be... It's probably not the first thing you upgrade but it's mm. probably around the third yes <laughs> because you really want your draws to be accurate and there are weird games where cards doesn't get upgraded at all it happens rarely but most of the time you need it upgrade sooner or later speaking of cards that's our five action the display doesn't look that good i think uh we're just drawing from the deck I'll think again. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, if you snap, well, it's okay. It's not tech. It's not cable car because you can't actually place that anywhere. The cable car's dead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have another. So, are you prioritizing the age of symbols that much that you're gonna snap up the horn bill here? It takes a bit too long. Oh uh, right. Okay. Okay. Two two monkeys and oh two monkeys and size three enclosure. All right. All right, I'm, yep, I'm down I for that. I had a three hex that I just yep. so happened to toss out because I was like, eh, three hex or two hex won't come sooner or later. <laughs> Fair enough. Very, very reasonable choice there. Okay, your opponent's building seems like they're finally going to cover their third H. And let's see what they get. They get Hydrologist. Uh, pretty pretty nice. for you. I tossed out the aquarium a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they're keeping a suspicious amount of money. They only built the size 3 and nothing else. Like I said, I suspected they were on edge about that plot of course. And I really? think it's something you just need to get over with. It's that or they for some reason thought starting with one petting zoo was a good idea. And it's not. <laughs> huh. <laughs> okay, another question. How often do you start with a partner zoo over a uni? Things I think... really need to align if I want a partnership. Even when there's a it's a condens test and I could just snag something for two, get another worker. I'm in what I call one rep hell. It is an <laughs> awful place to be in because your opponent just takes all the cards you want. Your draw um from range on the map is it's pretty, pretty useless. <laughs> so I don't like partnerships most of the time unless things really lie. Like a breeding program with an animal or a continent that's on the test. Bonus points if both are. But yes, I play the monkey, kill some time. I could use some more cards. I, just to see what's around. It'd be fun. Is part of the reason that you still want to venom your opponent? Or you just want to get um... the two monkeys out and support the project? I see that I can just do primates for two, call it a day there, and then I can gun four or wars for five um, over time. And yes, I do want to just sucker punch with the Venom if I can, it's fun. <laughs> so, so your plan right now is uh, two primates, five herbivore, five Asia in an ideal world? Yes. 
Now, of course, things don't always become ideal, so I need to adapt. But that's the current plan, and if it, that will be what I do for now. Okay. Yeah, uh, boosting cards makes sense. It allows you to cause the break soon. Uh, you don't really mind discarding expert in large animals, I guess. It might come handy sooner or later. I do have a dupe to toss out, and hey, maybe more large. <laughs> Generally, pl actually playing sponsors is more productive than breaking, but sometimes you just gotta break. <laughs> now I'm a little scared, but <laughs> he would also lose three cards if he tries to break. But I do like actually playing sponsors if I can. So I'm pretty mm. sure I have sponsors too here. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Just playing the expert for the discount. Yeah. Yes, I know you like playing um large expert in large yeah, tickets, after. but sometimes you don't have time. Mm -hmm. No, seems seems fine. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, quiet. Your opponent also has Waza. They played that for uh for two money. Uh, uh <laughs> so remember about that small animals conservation project? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been a dead farm. Happy right about now. Alright, let's see what we draw. Ooh. And this is when I'm torn. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can see, okay, because this is like really helpful for getting the herbivores, but the, these are going to stay in your in your pile for a while. Oh wow. It was a tough call. I was thinking, I got so many large herbivores, they're on the test, I got a meerkat there, I would love to play them all, except I know I'm probably throwing a white one but anyway. Well, I mean, with this hand, we got four herbivores if we can keep them all we're not i i need yeah. to do two at least do primates for two <laughs> so important okay your opponent uh comes out with a very nicely timed sunbathing monkey because yeah, they had a ton of cards not good for me and he's still under me for tickets so i can't vent him I'd say at this stage you have a pretty sizable lead, though, even with that sunbathing move. It seems like they yeah. built a petting zoo too early when they only had a guinea pig, and they just don't have a second petting zoo animal. Yeah, don't do that. Unless it's a horse. <laughs> okay, uh, sponsors two just to trigger the break. That's fine. Yeah, I, I accepted that I have to lose one of these. One of them has to be gone, and it has to be the muskox. Yes, it's funny grabbing all the sponsors, but the bison is pure raw power. I could get the American partnership. I already have one America. I just need to find one more somewhere else. I think that's a decision that a lot of people uh, wouldn't make. Like, I would, out of these, I would keep the muskox, personally. But, yeah, okay. So when you get the symbols, the bison is better. But it seems very, very far away. And, oh, there's a rhino. And now we're in a mad grab to get this rhino. <laughs> How much are you throwing away to snap up this rhino? Um, if I get the... Oh. I don't think I can upgrade cards, can I? Your uh, opponent has a good move, though. Native lizards. That gets them... That gets them basically level in the score again. Yes. But I will just punch them with a platypus. <laughs> Uh, good suggestion in the chat. There we go. Alright, now now the icons are visible for you. Yeah, so we know... I kind of need to win Primates for two, but... Eh, I think I just take the other uni, do the one, two. Oh, yes, I do get an upgrade. And yep. uh, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so your opponent can still snap it up if they spend an X token. Do you think they're likely it, to do that? It fits both the might. projects. Yeah. It fits both the projects. Um, species is not on the test. So I'm a little surprised they even use an X token to build. Yeah. Because you know I want that right now. <laughs> we should also point out that this is a current top 20 player or around top 20. So they're definitely not a weak player. 
Oh, what do you think about reptile houses? Man, that's awful, like, 90% of the time, unless you're doing something very cheeky. And by default, I only like building a reptile house if either reptiles is on the test, and I, for some reason, spammed a lot of two-hex reptiles, but even then, I would like to keep them in the two-hexes to let them activate kiosks. You tossed out a an alligator croc or something, because those are the four or five hexes. Mm -hmm. It's probably either the Kaiman or alligator, because those only take two in the reptile house, so you save a lot of room. Yep. Or you're doing something very cheeky that I once did, and it's a bit hard to explain, and I don't... We, we can get back to that later. It's a cheeky way to free up a five hex from a slow, slow worm or something that never lived in the five hex. Okay. We can talk about that later when we have time. But anyway, cards. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> we are. We have. Uh, we have that Swedish person in the chat, and he's come oh. a bit late because he's asking about petting zoos, and we've already answered that. But we'll quickly say it again. He said, uh, "If the horse is there, then uh, he's happy to keep them with only play it with only one petting zoo animal. Otherwise, two or bust." Yeah, that Swedish person really doesn't like petting zoo animals. They're great for pure raw power. They're efficient when you get them all, but will you get them all? And they don't help with tests. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, they help so, with species diversity, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and even then, if you're trying to rush species, you're only going to toss out one for now, and then you're just hoping that you find more later. Yeah. Okay, uh, your opponent's associating Australia Partner Zoo is a bit interesting. So this actually triggers a red flag for me. I know, I almost know what's going to happen, and I can't stop it. You're about to get... What? No. It's us. What is, what, why did he build a reptile house and take the Australian partnership? Yeah, so There's it's probably one animal. saltwater crocodile, I would say. Yes, and what did I toss out in the conservation row? Yeah, there's, uh, there's release... Is, is Okay, is releasing the crocodile actually that scary? It's gonna get him to that university, so I better hurry Ooh. up. <laughs> okay, so... But I do have a plan to get it. Now, I can't stop this, because I tossed out release reptile a long time ago for that water dragon. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Release, release reptile is here. I was looking at release Australia and the thing. Yeah. Release reptile yeah. is here anyway. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so this is probably then a size four for the Duke. So we can play that and yeah. get two monkeys. And yeah. Okay. With your build actions, I guess just throwing out a random pavilion here. Thank you, Chad. Kiosk. <laughs> Oh, see if that was me, I'd just yeah okay. It... If that was me, I'd just put a pavilion next to this other kiosk here. I have a problem with that. It wrecks up potential four hex that I may want for the rhino. Okay, that's something I. Oh yeah, it really actually does. That's actually something I didn't consider a lot. So, do you see the? The area that has build two reserved, the six hexes around it, that's yep. the reserved aviary spot by <laughs> default. Yes, yes. Built it there many so times. In case I need it, I will build an aviary. But if I don't, then I don't know. <laughs> but I need that four hex for the rhino. If I need an aviary, I have a spot for it. And then the five hex above is for the bison. Okay. How okay? How far ahead are you planning at your zoo? Because it seems like very far ahead. I'm more of just a go as uh, like play as you go player. Um, I like to think of my cards as putting things into a queue. Now, one game you analyzed, you were so confused as to why I took the five hand uni and then slammed down a five hex when I had a Eurasian Eagle Allen slow farm. Yes, and the answer was. They weren't for now, they were for later, because those animals weren't on the test. Yes, I could release a small one, but we're on observation where water is not your friend. And I saw that condor, I was like, yeah, it's pure value, I activate the ornithologist, get some money back, 
get one rep, so I can do the one-two combo with five rep easily without having to try just for that nightmarish one rep spot on Observation Tower. It was just better than trying to play those two animals. And I also don't like to build twice when I have it on upgrade on the first round, because it costs so much time. Yeah. Oh, no. It, yeah, we remember that, and it's going to be one more CP, and now my question is, does he have a pelican? <laughs> because if he does, I should probably kill Blue Mountain National Park. But I'm going to assume he doesn't. <laughs> is it also scary that he can release uh, two reptiles now? There's like also this, the tortoise over here that he can release, size 3 as well? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if he really wants it, he's gonna have to work for it. Anyway, enjoy your Venom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was the plan from the start of the game. Venom and the dude. I built the yes, I built the four hex up there because that would give me just enough money to play both. Yep, we have one left over, so hopefully we don't get venomed now. Uh, okay, your opponent seems to really need the money. So... No, it's just to cure the Venom token, and don't do that. <laughs> don't sponsor us one to kill the Venom token, just pass with it. The X token is going to be worth more than just sponsors one break one, gain one. <laughs> have, you, have you watched the video about how the Arc Nova cards are balanced? Um, yes, and I take those numbers with a lot of salt, actually, because everything is going to change according to what you need. A mm. snap may be useful now, but it might not be useful later. The iconics always vary by value. The giant panda, you better be able to get <laughs> the requirements, but if you do, yeah. your opponent's going to be terrified. That's why Asia is so stupidly strong. You get a Tarsier, you get a Sun Bear, you get a giant panda, <laughs> and you get everything else. And a Rhino. Oh, yeah, you do, but it's not like you need the Asian... Oh, yeah, it helps, but it's not like you need it. But I'm talking about the partnership-exclusive animals. Those yeah, yeah. three in Asia are great. So then I guess, yeah, you obviously assume Asia is the best continent. I don't think there's much debate about that. I think most people agree that Asia is the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what are we doing with a sponsor's five action here? Uh, I really cannot afford to uh, break because I need to get my project in. Okay, so, so we're, so we're Xing first. Is, what I see is I got an X token, get my worker in, and then take some income, you know. Um, now, what did I snap? I can't even figure it out. It Do might I like anything here. Might be the release project if you're that scared of it. But okay, obviously taking the uni, that's that was the plan all along. Ooh. Oh right. Can't let him release that. Fair enough. Oh man, can't play the FX is what I think. <laughs> can't you got a you got oh, wait, a perfect no, spot I, for I it. I do. Never mind. I did I thought I split that. <laughs> okay, your opponent's drawing cards. Oh, that's <laughs> that's disappointing. Oh, don't worry. Guess what happens? It's breaking time. <laughs> yeah, I kind of assumed you were going to trigger the break now with not much else to do. So this is a ton of money coming in. How? I have money, and I just broke a worker. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that's another good point. Your opponent has an unspent worker here, which they probably would have done next action. Oh, maybe not. No, they were going to play animals, but yeah, good time for a break. I guess in this position, you would consider yourself very far ahead. So you're ahead on points, you're ahead on income by like a lot, and you're you're like well working towards five herbivores. You don't even need the Asia, but you also have a Rhino in hand. So would you say game's over already? Maybe not just yet. There's a sliver of hope for him, but right because probably of the, not because of the release. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that's coming, but I have a clear shot on what I'm doing. I can go for herbs for five, maybe Asia for five, or four if I really need to. I got a Rhino to probably do 
America's for five, because I got that bison to toss in. Nothing is really interesting here, not even the proboscis monkey. I have no. a nickname for him. <laughs> uh, my friends and I call him Nosebig, because it's now, why is that backwards. We like to say that he's so bad, but at the same time, there are games where he's actually relevant. <laughs> he's like a very specific rhino. But obviously not when Primates is on the display. He is pure value, and if you for some reason need just pure raw power, yeah, it gives go a lot ahead, of points. Even if primates. But it's like, no. <laughs> I I already have a rhino and a bison to play. I don't think I have time for those big. <laughs> so someone in the chat said not like hate drafting expert in small animals. How many has he got? One. Yeah, he's got I'm one, but uh, but the the waz are as well. But yeah, probably yeah. not not too much of a threat. He's playing a croc. He's not really getting value out of it. In fact, I don't even like bosses all that much. Yeah, so if he is playing the croc like we suspect, then won't even get to trigger Waza. Okay, there we go. Interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Oh, right. Remember that penguin pool? Hmm, maybe he's trying to play Wingspan now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, takes the expert in small animals. And I'm okay with yeah. him having it. I wonder if he still has that penguin pool. I wonder if it was tossed out. Penguin pool is kind of scary because, as many people would say, birds too strong. Definitely the strongest. There are very few weak birds. <laughs> yes, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, okay, he's boosted Bill back down to one, so he's ready to release that croc. Yep. Nothing I can do, but at the same time, I'm still ahead, so I'm not most worried about in general. So, when you draw with cards upgraded, there is something that people do that tells me they are not playing properly. Do not press that button. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to draw one at a time. Was there any any consideration to snapping up the koala or no? Because... It's too inefficient. Um, oh, yes. This is another thing I need to talk about. So I see that koala and I'm a bit nervous because it's got Australia and I also kind of want the koala. So I am drawing purely from the top Merely to not put the koala on folder five, because if he gets one rep, it's over. And I don't think I'm getting one rep anytime soon to snag it. Right. So it's basically a cold war on the card row. I need to keep the koala at folder six so that it's not easy to access. At, so at this point in time, with no partner zoos in hand, do you still have plans to get them? Um... Uh... Like an it's Asia one now? I need to do because this Indian rhino needs upgraded animals. And right. this is when I know that I'm going to have a very long. I'm going to slow down a lot here because this tortoise needs animals upgraded. This rhino needs an upgrade. I need an American partnership anyway to play the tortoise and the bison. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, and okay. So you're actually planning on... This is a lot of money to be spending on animals. So you, so the plan is the tortoise, rhino, and bison. And yes. nothing else? Well, I'm... Yes, this is when I kind of sit around. I could try to fin a, the other tortoise just to kill some time, but I have a grass snake to kill time. Okay, fair. Uh, Yadi in the chat asks, do you think you over-upgrade sponsors early? I and... am admittedly partial to sponsors. <laughs> I love tossing things out like that. It's fun. <laughs> he says but... in, in the last game that you two played, he thinks it really cost you a lot of tempo. Uh, I'm trying to remember, what was this game? Um, who is this? When was this? This is uh, oh, that's, that Swedish guy. Oh, Jay Dansky. Yeah. Um. When was this? Was this also on Hollywood Hills? 
that that I can't that I can't tell you. I don't have that information. Because I remember playing two games. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on a little thing that it was a little mean to Jay Dansby, but I beat him once. The problem was it wasn't with my account. Um, there was someone that I know IRL and. I kind of overrode their account, as in I act, I was playing for them. Oh no, I'm not because sure we should be admitting this in in a, in a on a stream. <laughs> I know I feel kind of bad, but this person asked me for help, and I was like, "All right, this is what I'm basically teaching you a bunch of stuff. You can go figure out which game this was if you want, <laughs> but <laughs> it happened." And I will admit so. <laughs> Would I be kind of mad that that happened? Yeah, it's understandable. I I will confess. Okay. I think you're gonna have to be worried about the uh, the secret police coming. <laughs> That's what Julian says. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I have actually been him, just not with my regular account. You want to call it a Smurf? Go ahead. It's not really a Smurf. <laughs> I know this person RRL. <laughs> okay, and... so well, at, at the start of the stream, uh, BD, BDW said that talented communicator, explorer, and science lab were like three of the main reasons to upgrade sponsors. So that would have been one of, one of the key triggers to upgrade sponsors, the talented communicator that was in your match against uh, JD or YAD. Yes, because it's really nice to just get a worker without actually having to take that bonus. And if you're on a map like Research Institute or Ice Cream, uh, then you can just get the other worker to fake a two conservation button, <laughs> because you're probably getting the fourth worker that way. Okay, another question in chat. Have you seen the Arc Nova strategy guide by Orski? Is it any good? I haven't seen it personally. Uh, no. Uh, though, if I had to guess, I would disagree with a lot of things. Uh, people say that my mind is a bit all over, or I play very differently, is what people say. Yes, that's what I've said many times. <laughs> okay, your opponent's taken a small lead in points, but they're about 30 money down, they're still income down. I know they took a Lesser Bird of Paradise, it's okay to release, or maybe he just needs to kill time, but I need to kill time with, well, my grass snake. <laughs> it's not very great, but it's something to do. The problem is, what do I do from here? <laughs> yeah, so ideally you really need, like, a third worker to get another partner to, um... Ideally, I would... I could just put the project out, I think I was thinking something else, but let's see how it plays out. Another small interesting thing, building before playing Engineer, do you have any ambitions of filling up your board completely? Um, it's more like I just need the Engineer to deploy two 5Xs for my big animals. <laughs> so yes, you definitely want the Claw, and that's why I kept it at folder 6 to make things harder for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he just, uh... Expert in herbivores, that's... that's I see pretty the nice expert in herbivores. Is it snapping time? I take the, I take the expert in herbivores. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very well timed there. Monkey Park, but I think neither player's going for primates anymore. Right. I, find the mon I find monkeys to be a scam most of the time. <laughs> but then I see this, I'm like, oh, he wants it. <laughs> <laughs> he's left a perfect spot for it, but surely there's no way that he's actually going to... Well, he, he definitely wants it. <laughs> so conspicuously shaped like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, expert in herbivores and engineers are up to three herbivores now. We have the other two in hand. Yep. Yeah, so these are all playable. I definitely have a safe herbivores for five. I have a safe Americas for five with my rhino. I don't know about the Asia, though. 
but that's okay. I should have enough to keep me going with this tortoise. Yeah, I was going to say, surely there's not enough time to support, like, three full projects at five. Like, Herbivores and America 5 would probably see you out to the end of the game. Yeah. And so this is why I sometimes don't take animals on the test, and sometimes I just do my own thing, because if I try to work for the test, the game's already over, and I won't get to 5. Mm. Okay, opponent's playing Zoo School... Uh, they take the 10 money because they really need the money. How how would you generally rate the rewards from the CP track? So, I mean, obviously Uni uh, and Partners are best, but what about like 10 money times 2 drawing X tokens? 10 money. Very conventional. You, It's almost never... You're almost always happy to see it. Um, 3 X tokens. Also pretty happy to see because those things will come in handy sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Times 2. Very swinging when it comes to being useful because you really need things to align to actually get use out of that times two. Yes. Um play sponsor with money. Um I wish they did the thing that they're going to do in the expansion where you can hold onto the token and then just use it when you want. Because otherwise be nice. it's just terrible. Uh two rep, very useful. Um other thing am I missing anything? I feel like there's one or two I'm missing. Uh, oh, three hex. Yeah, three um, hex, yeah. Pretty situational, because three hexes are in a very awkward zone where they are neither large or small, and they s seem to get the worst of both worlds in my experience. <laughs> Do you rate the 10 money higher than the three X tokens? Uh, um, this is also another situational thing. Um, so I find the 10 money to always be flat out good. You almost can never go wrong with it, but 3x tokens can be even better, usually closer to the end of the game, or when you suspect that people are stockpiling x tokens to do the double association at the end of the game that kind of kills everyone. <laughs> the dream. But... So if I think my opponent needs 3x tokens, and I also need 3x tokens, I'm taking 3x tokens. Hopefully I'm not hurting on money, <laughs> and hopefully they're oversaturated in money. Yeah, so it's more it's more get game situational. Yep. I, uh, like I was going to question why you didn't play the uh, tortoise, but you still don't have animals upgraded, which is a bit awkward. Yes, so like I said, I knew I was going to slow down a lot from here. And I'm in an extremely awkward situation. Now, maybe I could cards and... Or, first of all, what do I clever? I probably clever dissociation since whatever. Oh, I did not... I think I cards just... is reasonable because you already have a handful of them. Yeah, I could have done cards, take the Blue Mountains National Park, release my platypus... Wait, no, I don't want to release a platypus. Ew. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, so, well, do... I have to get the second partnership the heart, <laughs> which is restart the round, get the partnership, then play my animals. Uh, so, do you rate the uni or the partnership bonus higher, or is that situational as well? Um, by default, I like my unis. I almost never want to take a partner, um, a content partnership unless things align. Usually it involves a breeding program with an animal that is on the test or just anything. Because when you have a breeding program, the reward for it fixes the problem of taking partnerships. Yeah, which, which is, is no reputation. You're stuck at one rep. <laughs> so if I have a breeding program, I'll, I might consider it. But, but otherwise, uni is... The one two combo is too strong. Okay, this is uh I guess an interesting decision. If if my math is correct, you could play no, sorry. I guess not very interesting. I mean I if... would need one X token yeah. to use and I need to get that partnership. I am dying for it. Yeah, so I was gonna say this is quite instructive. Uh this is a good time to trigger the break for you because you just need the partnership, you need to upgrade animals just to keep everything going. Whereas yeah. I think people some people would be baited by like if they can play a sponsor they would play it, but the breaks 
like too important. Yeah, it was something I accepted was going to happen would slow me down. But because I have sheer raw power in my cards, it should compensate. I have an engineer that's going to build two five hexes for me. So I have a clear shot to victory. And I'm thinking, huh, maybe I can end the game this round. Ooh. Yeah, you, the, yeah, the other thing is you do have a ton of money. And mm. snapping up... I, I, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe the bet. <laughs> just just uh, for a bit more money. It also might make things a little more convenient for me. Yeah, with the uh, spending uh, associating at a cheaper power. It's always and pretty hey, useful. one CP. One CP at the end of the game. Can't argue True, with that. yes, yes. Pretty good value card. Ten, 10 money, one CP, and basically like an X token every time you associate. Yeah. Not bad. I remember J. Dansby saying that Veterinarian's a bit overhyped, and I will agree. Um, It's not supposed to be an instant pick, but it's still nice to have. It makes your late game smoother. Okay, we have an alligator being played here. And the and your Ibex being played. Oh my Ibex. <laughs> <Give it back. laughs> Still not making use out of Waza actually, so it seems like a pretty big mistake to play this early, I would say. Yes. I think he just wanted something to toss out, but ugh. <laughs> I yeah. don't like it. <laughs> it's very specific and the reward is Well it works. Eh, might as well take Asia. When in doubt, take Asia. That's what I say. <laughs> well, you do have the Rhino as well, and these like the three animals you're going to be playing, so it may makes sense. Yes, but on the topic of why I say this, it's because... Yeah, Sun like Bear. Said, Asia, Asia is too strong. <laughs> when you have no other continent to take for your partnership, just take Asia. It's just stupid. <laughs> Uh, talented communicators here, but it's probably a, yeah, it's, it's probably served its, like, it's not going to be that useful anymore. Uh, I it, am still eyeing it, because it's 1 CP at the end of the game, and it would make my life a little easier. I have a veterinarian do that, but we'll see what happens. So I'm still eyeing it, if it comes to be natural adventure. Now, notice something here. Okay. I have, there's a Cody... And I also have a bison, or actually, no, we need to play this out. But I see four animals I can play. The Cody, the bison, the rhino, and the tortoise. And that's probably all I need from here on. Okay, well, yeah, you can... Oh, right. I actually don't mind that from your opponent. They're basically making money a non-issue. But actually, at the same time... They haven't spent a worker this round. Yeah. I actually like this a lot because it means I can rest in solace that um, what I'm about to do is probably not getting disrupted. I, I am kind of sure of that. Yeah, that right. There, there's probably going to be no, no more breaks for the rest of the game. Oh. Yeah, okay. Talent to communicate, it makes sense because you can just play the Cody with your first action. I can animals play the Cody and Bison or something. I can group Veterinarian and Talented Communicator together. And then I play my other two animals and then I mean, we'll, you'll see what happens. Anyway, this evil monkey ain't getting played. It's irrelevant. Uh, but yeah, drawing from the deck instead of drawing the Cody because money is really not an issue anymore. That's fine. Um, oh, and so you can sunbathe those... it anyway. Exactly. I'm just paying three more for this Cody, but I get four back for selling this monkey. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, yes. Yep, it's selling time. And my opponent should be very scared of this. Oh, and the multiplier lines up perfectly right now, okay. So yeah, taking the break might have shot themselves in the foot. But yeah, okay, so the game is going to end in basically... Three, two, two or three more turns, maybe two. No, it needs a little more time than that because I don't actually have my project out. <laughs> I, I need to play the other two herbivores. I need to get the project, but after that, it's GG. <laughs> because even if they try to break that times two, they're just wasting a turn. 
Pro, yes. Okay, well, okay. You can play sponsors, uh, communicator, and vet, then animals, then double associate. Would that not be over in three turns? Oh, yeah, that should be three turns, yeah. Should be you close, only get yeah. three turns from here. Okay, animals first, that's fine as well. Yeah, your opponent must know now that it's over. America's. Yeah, so you could take pretty much anything. You could take species, but America's is better because your opponent isn't going to get anything. They, they won't be able to leech off it, as you say. I'm not helping you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, we'll just skip through this. Uh, let's see what animals they have to play. Oh, uh, I wonder. How are your sponsors looking? Six uh, large animals, yeah. Not bad large animals. Eh, because I'm going to be playing two more sponsors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. Yeah, of course. No, I, yeah, I was just thinking that you'd already played sponsors and you had more animals. Yes, of course. Uh, yep, they played the koala, but too late. And they've still only played one petting zoo animal. Are we going to see a second? Yes. Okay, we got the sponsors being played. That is the very cool thing. You can, like, do sponsors at power five and... Wait, why is Expert in Africa being played here? It ended up being the same. <laughs> Except one... Oh, XT okay. Sure. Really? I was thinking you were going to unlock your fourth worker. Um... So, if you do the math, if I try to get a fourth worker with Talented Communicator and take the worker bonus, I get one CP and I get one more CP for... Oh, uh, the X tokens. Pass. Yes. So, it ends up being the same, and it's more like I want to flex that Africa. <laughs> for now, because it's actually being useful. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I think X tokens won't matter at all because he's going to take three as the reward. So you, you should you should end with five X tokens, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, your opponent takes two enclosure, but that doesn't matter. And yeah, final action of the game. Very nice to end the game with a 10 CP move. More than that, actually. Yeah, it should be... Plus thirty three. That's that's a good point that Robert Robert makes as well. This uh also helps Foreign Institute. Which... Oh yes, that's right. <laughs> so it is actually better. Okay, that's something that I completely missed. And something yeah, something I definitely wouldn't have thought of during a game, I think. So, a very clean win. Do you remember how many turns this was? I don't have premium, so I can't see. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, you're not able to look at any of the stats? Huh. Nope. <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> well, I can I can check for you. Yeah. <laughs> this was... I, I don't really think about turn count because... Sometimes there, it's a game where no everyone refuses to break. <laughs> True. This, this was 35 turns, yeah. So, like, a bit slower than normal, but I think that's to be expected on Hollywood Hills because everyone's too busy playing sponsors. So, yeah. very reasonable. It's funny when both people do sponsors five to break and then you just have a fresh new round <laughs> with nothing happening. <laughs> okay, uh... So, very well played. Uh, are there any other notes about this game that you wanted to discuss? I think it was pretty straightforward from, like, the mid-game. There were, there were, like, some interesting decisions early game, like releasing the Water Dragon, ditching Aquarium. It was very instructive. Yes. Um, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Uh, I think I can say general things that may not appear in the next game. 
Yeah, um, sure, go for it. Oh, I can do it now? Um, yeah. Oh, no, I've lost my train of thought. No, that's all right. We can move on to the... Well, okay. Firstly, do you have time for the next game? Um, time is 5.16. Yes, I do. But at the same time, I am extremely embarrassed about this game because I misplayed so hard and I only won because I got lucky and the worst case scenario did not happen. That's um, all right. We can, uh, we can okay, discuss well, that I'm as it comes up. on my phone. I'm playing on my phone. When I'm playing on my phone, I'm probably being lazy and I'm tired. Because <laughs> I just want to sit somewhere comfy, lounge, chill. Nope. <laughs> One wrong move can cost me the game. Um, I got lucky and it did not cost me the game. But there was a worst case scenario where I could have lost. <laughs> and it was scary. <laughs> So I'm going to have to look at all these misplays, stare at them right in the face, and be like, I can't believe I did that. Oh, I just realized we're on Hollywood Hills again. <laughs> um, I think I sent you another game that would have been more fun. Oh, I understand what I did. I'm being an idiot. So I, I just opened up the game you said, uh, do not... Use. Yes. <laughs> I'll find I that other game. I remember this game. I was so embarrassed about what I did, and I still won. <laughs> also, it's probably for the best we analyze the other game because this is Hollywood again, and I'm like, oh, Oonga Boonga sponsors too. <laughs> uh... Do you have a link Can I to the. I'll send you a link. Uh... I'm going to find it real quick. Yeah, uh... thank you. This one? Ah, yes. Sending it to you right um, now. Here you go. Lovely, thank you. So, oh, okay. We're, we're going to ignore the results just there. Everyone, don't look at that. I believe you had questions about this one. Yes. Even though this was only a 350 ELO player. There were some interesting things to talk about, at least from what you told me. Uh, yes. yes, and this is a game where I can talk about something. The the horse. <laughs> oh yeah, that's here. Okay, so uh, horse. we can uh so we can look at this, uh looking at the projects. Because there's species diversity, are you more inclined to keep the horse, or is it just a default good pick because it's a horse that gives reputation? Oh, I love the horse. I would probably still do it because in Park Restaurant in particular, mm -hmm. there's a clean shot of putting a petting zoo on the left, play a sponsor immediately, and you just have a strong start from there if you have a relevant sponsor. And guess what? I do. I have a Meerkat den. And not only that, look at my association. Yeah, I have priority. You're going to get that that uh, uni that you couldn't get the, the last game? Yep. Okay, so that's one and two being kept. Um, the problem, the problem with the tiger, well, the tiger's completely unplayable. The adder's pretty unplayable. The adder doesn't really help with continents either, because you need the partner zoo. The python's unplayable, so... Is this just another game where you're going to start with a release project and no herbivore? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and then, what's the fourth card? Gorilla Field well... Research, probably? You would be correct. And this is a good opportunity to talk about some hope drafts and what I like to call critical hits. Okay. Because I don't have anything to support this grill research, as far as I see. I would have to go through the hassle of taking the two rep uni, which at least I'm already doing, but then I'd have to take the two research uni, and who wants to do that? <laughs> yeah, and there's no reward for a th third uni on this map, so it's like a little bit out of your way to do it. Yeah, I might still have to, I, I would probably still do it, but it's going to be gross not having a five hand, and I may just have to adjust to that. So yes, this is what the hand looks like. Okay, this was, oh. the, this was the first thing I wanted to talk about. Do you have plans on putting your, putting your face on victory column this season? Uh, <laughs> yes, I would like to change the Swedish statue into an American statue. <laughs> I call it the Swedish statue because it, some people may already know this is half 
promo half preview. There is a card in the expansion called Mascot Statue, which is exactly this, just reskinned, and that's coming in the expansion. But as they talked about in BGG, they are they are going to put the face of the current arena champ on Victory Calm, should they like that. Um I might. <laughs> it would be fun. Have oh, have you got a dogs. okay. Well, okay, be honest with us. Have you already got a picture planned? I have one plan. I don't have it right now. Um, the reason I don't really want to talk about how I'm going to get the picture. It's nothing illegal. It's just there's something I'm attending. <laughs> Some people might figure out what I'm attending, but I'm trying to keep it low key, except not really because I'm already talking about it. <laughs> if you see me there, great. <laughs> Assuming you know what I'm talking about. And, uh... and it's something that's competitive. <laughs> J- JD is saying it's a hypothetical question and there's a fat chance of it happening anyway, so you probably shouldn't worry yeah, too much. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay. So, hmm, I wonder what's the most attractive card here. <laughs> Spokesperson is pretty nice. And then the other plus is well, you, you already know that you want to take the one science uni, so it's like a good pick for you and a denial pick for them. Yeah, so I've accepted you're having the spokesperson. I need to adjust. <laughs> but yeah. I'm taking the two rep uni anyway. So yes, as you said, I need this for myself and I'm gonna deny you. Okay. And then yeah, I can already guess your second move. And yeah, this is very sad from the opponent, but they take the two science uni, which you kind of force them to do because they have spokesperson and obviously no other way to get the science. Yep. And then here, that petting zoo move you talked about. How yes, I love an excuse to start like this. I mean, it's it's very strong. It. Yes, I have a meerkat den that helps me with species. It hugs the restaurant very nicely. The mm-hmm. only thing that does better is aquarium. Yes. Uh, small theon positioning. Any reason you're like leaning towards the top instead of going around towards the reputation? If I need a 5x now, oh man, the A very spots on this. Uh, I really don't like dealing with that little nook and cranny around the great rocks near the restaurant. That 1x mm. is annoying because. It makes it an aviary spot, yes, but it means it's only an aviary spot. It's very in, not flexible. Um, the bottom right is where I usually like to put my aviary, because yes. if you see the six pattern, it's what I like to call the anything spot. It can be a five hex, it can be a reptile house, it can be an aviary. It's whatever you want. Huh. So it's good to keep your options up like that. I've I've never noticed like a six pattern like that, but thinking about it, yes, that makes complete sense. Hmm. Okay. All right. Here's the uh, spokesperson. <laughs> So this told me that they were very desperate. <laughs> Still not a bad start, though. I mean, you're always happy when you get spokesperson out. Yes, it's just kind of sad that I took the two rep units. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we also didn't talk about your end game goals, but you have sponsors who are in diverse species. Uh, both reasonable, like not the best, but not too bad. Yeah. Uh, now, mine that diverse species may go up in value assuming I win these races, because there's species on the test. If I'm already trying to gun for five and I do it, then diverse species is going to help a lot. Okay, well, let's talk about that now. So these are probably the two easiest projects to go for. I actually don't like when this happens. (laughs) Yeah, when there's both of them, right? Because it's hard to win both races, but... You should basically be trying to win one of these races in a two-player game, right? Yes. If you let your opponent win both of them, what did you do? <laughs> you probably messed up really hard. <laughs> Don't let them win both. That's awful. Uh, sponsors yeah, I have five. nothing better to do. <laughs> And, well, you don't even mind the break, because you have six more income than the opponent, and... Exactly. Yeah. So, here's another thing that you may notice. My opponent has nothing built at the moment. So, it would take way too long to build and then place an animal to get some income and deploy cards. I can now cause break and 
he will have garbage income. Worst case, he plays a petting zoo and then, I don't know, plays something that pugs the restaurant. But still, I'm putting that threat out. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, they actually, they do copy you. Hey, and they play forte. Science Institute. So actually I pretty like, good. Uh, something is up. And I boiled it down to three cards from here. It's either medical breakthrough, science museum, mm -hmm. or the research project. And because they kept Science Institute from their starting hand, that we, we pretty much know that it's one of those. Yes. So that would also mean it's a good time to trigger the break before they get one of them out. Yeah, in case it's one of the sponsors, I should probably stop that. <laughs> uh, okay, anything snappable here is the next question. I don't want this Swedish statue as Sweden <laughs> scrolled all over it. But I also don't like mascot statue that much anyway. I, I need this. <laughs> okay, it yes. It be useful for the test. <laughs> and it's also pure raw value. Because now I see that I can do both Gorilla Field Research and the Cobra. Okay, so it's like it's like another incentive to get the two research thing. And it I, stops your yes. opponent a little yes, bit. Yes, and also... That five research is kind of worrying me. <laughs> so out of, out of those cards you mentioned... Okay, we get rid of the Herbivore release, which is fine. There's no Herbivores. Out of those three cards, which are you most scared of? Um... Probably Science Museum. That thing gives you money and CP. <laughs> yes. Man, I wish I could have both like you. A lot of CP as well if you still if you still have more icons to put out. Yep. It's extremely threatening. Okay, your opponent's drawing before animals. Um Well, okay, they have and three cards. I, yes, but I'm also confused about this because species is on the test. Hey, look, a Cody. <laughs> mm. Yes, okay. So things that give like Predator and Bear or Herbivore and Bear are especially good when there's species diversity because that bear icon is very hard to get. It's like hacking in a an icon. You don't need one of the five conventionals anymore. Yes. Plus I have a petting zoo, so I don't need two of them now. Okay, so this move is the uni, but you're definitely looking at snapping up or drawing the Koti as soon as possible. Yes. So... Yeah. Uh, upgrading animals first to get reputation, fine. Yeah, because there's no reputation from this uni that would normally give it. Your opponent also associating before animals. Okay, that makes sense. So they've used their X token. We know this is uh, research now. And they use it to upgrade build. Reasonable. I guess they could have played animals before then and saved an X token, but they probably need to build something to fit an animal in. It just seems quite backwards at the moment for them. I would have just passed on animals if I didn't have a petting zoo and just built a petting zoo for the sake of deploying Science Institute really quickly. Mm. But at the same time, I wouldn't think it's worth it just to build a petting zoo to hook in there, like, a dead building. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, also note they took the worker. Yes, so this, this tells me that they don't want a cause break, because <laughs> they want value from that worker. And if you look at my cards and the situation so far, I have... Do I have... Oh, yes, I'm the one with the Meerkat 10. I have a clean shot to get a worker. Can you see how? Well, yeah, you have Gorilla Field Research for two rep. Uh, one rep over here, animals and horse. Yeah, that does give yeah, eight. So, yep, that's my goal. And I see I have a research project to leech off of. Right. So, yes, the other bonus about taking the two science is that you have three science and four with your gorilla field research. 
So a lot of the benefit that your opponent got was the early four CP, but they're giving you three CP right back. Yep. Um, okay. So I guess now's a good time for guerrilla field research. Are you just waiting yep. for them to go past you in appeal so you can hip, hip, hypnotize them? Uh, maybe. It might be best reserved for later. I don't need it now, because what am I going to hypnotize? <laughs> True, yeah. Now, my opponent should acknowledge that I have an Indian Cobra that will be deployed sooner or later. Yeah, they yeah, actually X out animals. Yeah, you should have done that earlier. Last move, <laughs> yes. I guess the benefit is there are association is ahead of animals now but yeah they've spent the next token to do it so it wasn't worth it <laughs> yeah it's just a horse <laughs> i'm fine on income i'm hugging the restaurant i got at least a few tickets i just need that one rep <laughs> this this was one of my questions so i think a lot of players there would have done a build for action before animals just to, in order to play both animals no, the Cobra's kind of useless. Yes, I could kick down their association, buy it some time, but that's not worth it. Okay. Ah, yes, and there's going to be something very scary about this. I, I was, oh, so. sorry. I was also thinking that you could build uh, a, like a size 2 and play the Koti as well. No, because... Well, I could, but my... But you really want to build things. five to get to this. Yes, I, yeah. I need build five to get to that one rep. I, it's okay. my goal to leech off of that project and start getting some sort of benefit. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so that's like two main reasons not to. And and you've got cards coming up here anyway, so yeah. Well, I don't need the cards to get the Cody. Oh yeah, sorry, you, you're also about to cover this spot, yes. Of course. Opponent plays Aquarium, which we're going to see hugging around the park restaurant very nicely. Yeah, this was this is when I start to worry a little, because that's his income fixed. <laughs> yeah, so now income's a level, money is level, uh, they're slightly ahead on points. But I'm going to fix that. <laughs> yeah, so the main issue is that they've done a lot of cool, interesting stuff, but there are still these two projects that they haven't started at all. And if you notice, if I take this Cody and then I eventually play the Cobra, I have a free shot of species for five. Yeah, because you already have herbivore, petting zoo, and now reptile. Yeah. Okay. Nothing weird about the placement so far. Yep. Two enclosure touching rock. And second worker, very nice. Uh, opponent's going to build. I assume they're going to build towards their reputation as well. They just draw from the deck. They seem a little desperate to like cover both of their spots now just to draw from the deck. Would you generally reserve those spots for when you like want to draw something from the display? Yes. Um... You should never underestimate the threat that map draws out because it means that they can use build to draw and take something away from you or take something they want. Mm. Park Restaurant has three, and for better or worse, they're kind of bunched together. <laughs> they also only decided to build four, so yes. a little so bit suspicious. I don't know. Yes, it's like I'm thinking in my head, what costs... 12 or 13 bucks. <laughs> it's like one of those oh. su sunbathing monkeys, right? That might yes, be one the, of the reasons, yeah. A lemur, the Bolivian Red Howler. But we'll see. It, I, it's too much time to worry about it. Oh, hey, look, a rhino. <laughs> yeah, so th this was another talking point. Um... The value of rhinos when there is both habitats and species diversity out. 
um, it plummets <laughs> to the ground so hard by default because you don't know if you're accidentally going to go all in on one continent or one species. Rhino is supposed to do species for five because it's so cheesy. It's yeah. so easy. But once that's already already on the test, it already loses battery. And then when the backup of continents is also <laughs> out there already, <laughs> you really need to go all in on one thing. Mm, so, so it's just it a bit tricky. Much less appealing. Yeah, but, but I'll still humor it. Yeah, maybe. still still worth keeping. For now. Yes. Uh, we're gonna see that uni. Yep. So pretty nice. Person gives them has spoken. <laughs> gives them three reputation, and they upgrade associate second. I'm thinking you clown. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Actually, well, by default, this would be a good idea, but we will see why this ends up back backfiring. Okay, they also get to upgrade cards. Um, I guess the plus is they don't really need their reputation from animals right now because they have spokesperson like already. Well, I guess they could really use one more reputation actually just to get the third worker. They could always do the fallback of take a partnership and take two rep. So it's not mm. too bad. So it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Leeching off the research. Thanks. <laughs> I love my five money. And upgrading cards, uh, mainly because you're close to 10 reputation, I guess. Yep. So a good time to upgrade it. So I guess because you animal. because you haven't seen one of the sponsor one of like the sponsor triggers yet, are you planning on upgrading association or you still haven't decided yet? It's good to be in the state where you don't know exactly just yet. It's like being undecided and you can just jump on whatever is the best opportunity. Because I'm going with the core three for now. I don't see a reason to do sponsors, so it might be association. I don't know, but at least I don't have to make that decision just yet. And yes, we were right. It's the lever. Very nice timing for them. Um, yeah. So they've started on their sp species and habitat, but they're well behind. I've already won species for five. <laughs> if you were the opponent and you saw me take a Cody, you should give up, <laughs> unless yeah. you ha also have a bear. They also saw you take the cobra, so they they know that you have uh, have all yes, of them. Yes, we should acknowledge that. <laughs> so, something has to be tossed out here, and as I said, the rhino is kind of dead <laughs> because of both the diversity projects being out. So... I think this is still a decision that a lot of people wouldn't make. I, I totally get the reasoning for it. I just if if this was my game, I would keep the rhino 100 percent and toss out the small reptile, but the reptile has its advantage because you already have a size one enclosure here. Yep. So goodbye, Rhino. It was nice knowing you. I know I have a Meerkat den, but I have two projects that are so cheesy that I have to worry about right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rhino is not gonna help with either. <laughs> Yeah, also the other thing is that you've already supported like a decent project already and Birds is there, which is maybe the third easiest one to support. We haven't seen a lot of Birds for some reason, but it will eventually happen. Yes, they're, they're, they are out there. Okay, your opponent prioritizes the Fox for some reason. I guess because it is a different icon, but it's like, it's the same habitat. I'd probably be looking for something different. Yeah, why not take the croc? Or, I, I call mm. it the croc, the alligator. I do find it funny that the alligator is just a kaiman that gives you one more ticket but costs two more money. And ends up being worse for release because you have to hack in one more money somewhere. <laughs> if you're trying to do it round one. Uh, okay, animals... So, there was a reason I broke 5 earlier. Not just because I had nothing to play, but Shiny Association 2. 
Oh yeah, well, this is actually, this is going to be a very good hypnosis now. And, yeah, okay, that must be very annoying for them. But they they should have foreseen this, because they saw you take the, the Cobra. Yep. Also, Can okay. I say thanks. Yes. You didn't play the, uh, the other Reptile. Because um, you really want to make use of the sunbathing ability? Yeah, it doesn't have to be now. The Cody's a little more important. And I will probably draw more cards from... Somewhere, probably cards five. I don't need it yet. Africa first because why actually? Because maybe... there's the monkey here. Yeah, I'm a little worried that maybe he wants to play an evil monkey against me. <laughs> and hey, look, a leopard. <laughs> okay, another That's good reason. Considering. Okay, now we get to that uh, situation. I guess you take the ten money here. Yeah. It's because no one is really killing for rep this game. This is a very strange game where we're all <laughs> high rep for some reason, so money is more at a premium. Yes. Tech oh. Institute, <laughs> very, very good card for them right now. Gets them their third worker, although, yeah, so, get, so uh, putting their association down does hurt their tempo a lot. Using their upgraded association is extremely nasty because I wrecked the donation track with their upgrade. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And that, yeah, they should have foreseen it because they saw you t take the Cobra, but I guess it's a lot to keep track of. But if you want to be a top player, those are the things that you do have to keep track of. Okay, I'm not proud of the next move, and I will say, I was on my phone, I was tired. This was a game where I was actually in a car ride to a board game place. <laughs> so this 3-hex that I'm about to play was not reasonable. Mm. <laughs> and you'll see why <laughs> very soon. Well, I'm I'm going to guess you play the Koti in there. <laughs> yeah... And it, I was like, I would love to play a leopard in there. And then I realized, oh, wait, where's the Cody go? <laughs> uh, how are your icon? Yeah, so you really do need the bear icon in order to species five, yeah. Yeah, I was like, whoops. <laughs> oh, small mistake. Uh, opponent's Costed building. Two bucks. Maybe I put the three hex to scare that I will play a leopard or a pea fowl. I don't know. It's not like I'm playing a pea fowl. Oh, wait, I do have an Asia. Maybe the three hex was to scare. <laughs> It worked. They are. Uh, they took the peafowl. Okay, playing animals then they now. Have known I had a Cody. <laughs> and I yes. That Cody. <laughs> still oh, another small no. Oh yes. Still not I playing guess, the reptile. Yes. Um. There's a better opportunity for it somewhere. Um. Um, I see there are three cards I can draw. Ah, yes, that bonus. It's also extremely situational, and usually it's not good because it disrupts your tempo of cards because it means your cards is way too ahead. You're going to probably lose a bunch of cards, mm -hmm. but if you have something that counteracts it, like my sunbathing Agama or Koala, Kangaroo, something like that, then it's good. Otherwise, it kind of messes with the pacing of all your actions okay so your plan is to take three card draw over three x tokens is that what i'm hearing right now yes for better or worse <laughs> uh and what do you think about five money over the two reputation for the opponent um i just take the two rep i know it's not the most useful but worst case is gonna eventually be the equivalent of two tickets yes true maybe okay. they need the money really badly i don't know graham in the chat's pointing out that you already do have four x tokens which is fair enough <laughs> yeah that's another reason i do know i'm gonna let my opponent have three x tokens probably oh here's a little mean thing i do if I get to 10 conservation, I'm going to say discard a scoring card first because I can do my draw right now. I'm not, I'm going to obfuscate as much info as I can. 
So I'm kind of rude like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, keeping diverse species, no real choice there because you only have two sponsors played. Yeah, look at look at his species. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you're going to... Right now you're on like eight points for species diversity if it would go that high. Ooh, missing continent. Found. Uh, leopard is pure value. And... I don't want my opponent having an alligator because there's an aquarium, it fills some missing tags. I need the expert herbivores to double down on the meerkat den and also keep my sponsors busy. Okay, so expert on herbivores is extra good value because of the meerkat den. So it's like, yeah, yeah two appeal and three money immediately. Um. Yeah, looking at the game situation now, even though your opponent had a very cool start with the research, you do seem very far ahead again. And yeah, it looks like you're going to beat him to five continents as well. You just need Europe. Yep. Uh, they do play the Fox and the Peafowl, which we saw them draw. So these are things that aren't helping with their continents either. It helps yeah. them get to three species. Well, they need four, but it helps them get to four. And they still haven't built anything in their petting zoo. It's been a dead petting zoo for a very long time, and like I said, <laughs> don't do it, it's not worth it. Oh, you may have noticed that I took low mountain range away despite there being absolutely no birds at the moment. And then even then the beef house kind of off to release. It's because Low mountain range, release bird, is just too scary to have on the board. Too many big birds, and I can't let that happen. So ideal birds would be like the secretary bird or the white stork? Any any um, others? Pelican, even a marbu is good enough. Um, basically all the aviary birds. Mm. Even the condor, the two vultures, the eagles, they're all good enough are great. So you really don't want that to happen. I'm basically killing as many projects as I viably can. And this is a project too dangerous to let happen, especially when birds is already on the test, because you can first get the birds yeah, and, and then, then release, release them. the birds. Do you think it's more of a priority? Well, I mean, obviously you're doing it, but do you think it's less of less of a priority because there are these easy tasks already on the board? Um, they're spammy. They don't get a lot of points now. Species is now at a leisurely pace because I already yeah. did the five. But if my opponent was paying attention, they should have given up <laughs> from the start. I had a Cody and a reptile, um, the Cobra that would have gotten me my five. So I'd be like, yeah, I can't do that anymore. I should at least try to race for Habitat for five, but my opponent clearly is not. Uh, playing the expert in herbivores, fine. Yep, keep myself busy. Federal grants, so, another another spokesperson. So they're up to eight science icons now. That's pretty decent value from spokesperson. They must be wondering where's my science museum. <laughs> <laughs> I think even a science museum wouldn't wouldn't fully get them back into the game. Another size one enclosure. And taking the monkey. That's going to be very mean if you still rob them now, even though they're far behind. Yeah, I can rob them right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> We're even on tickets. Okay, that, that was another question I had. Do you prefer playing with peaceful mode on or off? So, I don't know if this would surprise anyone, but I actually like peaceful mode on. It's what my friends and I play by default when we play IRL. Mm -hmm. And it's because we kind of don't like, we feel the targeting for these effects is a bit arbitrary. Yes, we get, I, it's supposed to be a catch up mechanic, but in my perspective, it's kind of, and eh. I'd rather deal with determination snakes than evil monkeys. Yes. I find, yeah, pilfering to be very annoying, especially in a position like this where I think everyone can tell that you're clearly ahead, but because your appeal is the same, you can just rob them anyway. It does seem a bit unfair. Yes. 
I don't feel that the charging mechanic would act, always pick the true um, person who's actually winning at yes. the moment. Especially if I do like five release projects and I have way too much CP and way too few tickets, I'm still sustaining and then I can just punch you with a monkey for free. <laughs> This is why I fear the three hex evil monkey, the Japanese maquis, mm. because it's a double. <laughs> yes, I, I am on. I am on record saying that I think the pilfering monkeys are pretty overpowered. I know Jay Gansby says not really, but those things are trump. I once got pilfer three, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful i think that actually happened to me yesterday i got pilfered for three in one move yeah but i was that far ahead it didn't matter but yeah, yeah. it's very annoying so here's a risky move i'm considering i could animals and play the evil monkey and i ho i'm hoping he gives me five money because then this gives me enough money to play the agma but if i get a card i'm kind of screwed because <laughs> i can't play the agma first otherwise the evil monkey can't do its thing so I'm hoping my opponent likes their cards too much that they don't want to risk it. And okay, let's, let's see, see what happens. Wow, well, lucky. <laughs> and now's a good time to play the Agma. And if you notice, I put it in that one hex right near the spot that's only near Blocker. Because if I find another reptile or some one hex that needs water or rock. Uh, in this case, water. And I don't want to funnel myself. Yeah, it's also touching the chaos too. I think that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, currently I'm thinking I reserve that one, either one hex for the Thorny Devil. It gets me that missing Australia. Yeah. And I'll just get Europe the hard way. Okay, Robert in chat asks that you like building kiosks compared to JD. Do you think that's true? Uh, ice cream may have influenced me a bit too much. <laughs> uh, I am aware that is your favorite app, and hey, I, it's mine too. Do you think you do? you think you overbuild kiosks? I think I used to, and then I got better at it <laughs> because I, I'm starting to try and make my kiosks more efficient. Yes, by at, having them touch at least two things, ideally three. Hopefully four or five things align. My kiosks are doing very well at the moment. Yeah, I'll say they, these are happy. beautiful kiosks right here. You got this one touching four different buildings and this one touching three. Very yeah, nice. now mind that those kiosks are only going to make money from those buildings if they're flipped. Yeah. But it's nice to know that you have the spot reserved for it. Okay, we have a bird breeding program. From the opponent. I think I remember them seeing it take. I think I saw them take this bird breeding program. I think it was in the row, and I saw it, and I should have expected it. Uh, but it's whatever. I'm not. Oh, uh, maybe they they did they did just draw four cards from the deck all at once. So I think they might have grabbed it in there, but not a hundred percent sure. But either way, they've played it. Oh yes, and they. I have to give them the three X tokens, but ultimately I need the draw to get more options in general. Yeah, well, you've used Options up nice. you've used up most of your cards from it anyway. Yeah, quite quite funny and atypical that neither player has the card size, like the hand limit uni. Yes, we're playing a very strange game here. <laughs> this isn't supposed to happen. I don't know why it's happening. Okay, we're drawing one at a time, as you said, and there's a second rhino. Yep. And this is when I have extremely tough decisions. Uh, the Leopard, yes, it's nice, but I like everything else. But also, I know I'm throwing a bunch of this stuff away. Because I can't afford to build and play these. Yeah, and there's going to be a break very soon. Because look, my opponent has no money. What else are they going to do? Break my three cards. I will say, good, good move by your opponent recognizing that they can spend 2x tokens to break, because they're getting one back from Triggering and one from Tech Institute. Yep. That's something so that would be is, easy to miss. Yeah, so this is when I have an extremely tough decision. And why I chose this? 
it was not easy. Uh, I figured I'll just get Australia the hard way. I found my Europe through this moose. I can cram both the rhino and the moose together because if I build a four hex at the bottom right, I'll have just enough money to play both and then do habitats for five. And then maybe this herbivore breeding program will be relevant later because I'll probably upgrade association. I didn't see any sponsors that were appealing, so hmm. association, I got money to burn. Plus, I want my herbal course because we're Captain and x Yeah, so that's like ex extra good reasons to play the herbivores. I, there was a Eurasian brown bear that I was very sad to toss out because <laughs> it was also European. Mm, it's also one of those rare times that you have a bear icon already played and you can play it. Yeah, but I figured I don't have time for that. I need to put the rhino and boost together. Okay, so uh, this yeah. is just Australia partners you just to get the uh, all the icons. Yeah, and just upgrade association because I'm there. There were no shiny sponsor cards. Wow, I didn't upgrade sponsors. Who is this? <laughs> So you, you wouldn't have looked at the stats at all then of how much you upgrade it compared to how what percentage do you think you upgrade sponsors? I already know the answer. It's like oh. 50% of the time. <laughs> I, or 60. It, I watched your videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 60. I'm I'm actually making a video where I go through all the stats of the top 20 players that'll be released sometime next week. So that was very oh, interesting nice. to look at all that. Um, but yeah, you are a petting zoo lover, I think. Uh, it's more like I'm a horse lover and everything else can go into garbage in here. Actually, no. Venice Lobby is great, but usually for later. You do need some fodder for it, but it's going to give you plus two tickets. And then the donkey is nice. It's an X token slapped on your petting zoo. So unfortunately, those one hexes aren't getting used. And this is when I start to worry a little if my opponent had two animals that could have been played that were going to fill in those two continents. I had to take the risk, but I also wanted to play the Rhino and Moose anyway, because I want my Herbivore's project out. Mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping that they're missing the continents, and it seems like they are, since they didn't play animals. Well, yeah, your opponent is still three continents short. If they get two from missing animal... Or like they play. Oh animals, right, they, they have. Oh uh, yes. Wait. Yeah, so that's what I'm hoping they don't do. But I see them snap this Tasmanian devil, and I think, yeah, they're desperate. <laughs> right. Let's look at it. Okay. So they don't even have an enclosure for it yet, but they are. So they are close to five continents because because they, they can spend X tokens to get a partner zoo and then habitat. So that's yes. an Australia icon they need, and then they either need America or Europe. And then they fill in the blank with association. Yes. Okay, so it's like highest priority now to uh, get habitats done. Yep. Can't let, can't let them have habitats for five. I need to win harder. <laughs> and as you calculated, uh, the perfect amount of money, and you take herbivores here, which makes sense. So yeah, you're already up to four herbivores. Even supporting it at four is a reasonable move. Yep. So if I don't find a fifth or four, I'm not going to be upset. I was going to say, a funny thing happened in my game yesterday or two days ago. I was in a very similar position to this, uh, where I had all my things uh, for, I think, habitat, maybe species, diversity, and we were both racing for five. My opponent had two cards in hand. And I was thinking the only way they can screw me over is if they have an eagle and another species they needed. And of course, the two cards in their hand were an eagle and a species they needed. And they beat me to uh, five. Yes. So a thing I do a lot is figure out the worst case scenario, assume so, unless otherwise. But yeah, th thankfully with this, they don't have room for an eagle, which is what I was just looking at. <laughs> Um, even a sun bear wouldn't help. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that too. Like, they could fit a sun bear in there, but it wouldn't give them a unique continent. 
But it's, yeah, that was the, definitely their plan. They were one turn away from sneaking Habitat away from you. Yeah, I think they were hoping I wasn't paying attention. I would just monsters. Yes. No, I see that they can do a one two with that association, dealing association eight and missing continent, and then doing that test with So I got snag it now. Uh, X tokens here, very reasonable because you're now out of them. Yep. And yes, Robert in the chat said the top 20 players seem to move around a lot lately. There's definitely a lot of movement. I think. The top five hasn't been moving too much. I think you and JD are, like, well at the top. Yeah, except something strange is going on. We've been getting cold. I think, as you said, in general, players are getting better. <laughs> yes. So, the good thing for my opponent is they can do all these projects at a leisurely pace. The bad news is I'm extremely ahead. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, and a huge know, margin. Yeah. They should know I have herbivores in my hand. They also take the America's Partner Zoo just to let you know that they could have taken it from you. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you need the Americas for something? I don't know. A macaw! <laughs> well, they have two cards in hand and we know one of them's a lorikeet, so we're, we're not sure, but... Yeah, yeah G game's I'm pretty over. I took this King Vulture just as... Solace, because what these new birds are for. Hmm. That would, yeah. I guess if there was any way they would come back, it's probably going to be birds of four, but the game should be ending in like two or three turns, I guess. Now, oh, very nice. Yeah, so one, yes, I want that hand up. <laughs> so that, that's the yeah. perfect fifth uh, herbivore icon for you. So then I guess the next few mills, uh, moves are build, panda, Association game over. Yep. This is, yeah, this is actually, so it was a very weird start, but this has been one of the more straightforward games, I think. Well, I guess with you here, it's like easy because you're logically explaining all your thought process. Yep. Now, I wanted a few more tickets, so I spent a few more. Um, on my build, and I see that bar move. It's looking attractive. Yeah, <laughs> why? Why not? It is there. Move. You're you're uh, you're not short of money, so why not? Yep. What was your diverse species? I guess. <laughs> uh, well, okay, yeah, you're still looking pretty good for diverse species, and only the one petting zoo animal. But it was a horse. It was worth it. It was worth it. It's a horse. You <laughs> can't beat a horse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just snag that Marbu. It's four more points. I like points. <laughs> animals at four over five. I get, yeah, okay. I guess the reputation doesn't do anything. There's the leopard back that you that you ditched. <laughs> I, I felt bad for it. <laughs> and now I'm thinking, hmm, the only thing that could ruin me right now, or just annoy me slightly, is a boa constrictor. Guess what comes out? <laughs> oh, wait, no, anaconda. Close enough. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't do Association 8 to get a partner suit and associate? Fine, I'll just Association 5. <laughs> Thankfully... But at that point, the game was over. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, you had enough X tokens for it as well. Yeah, nothing else to really maximize here. This is when I figured out that it was not an aviary game because I had this Rhino and Moose and that was all I needed. So I was okay with playing that poor hex there. Yeah, well, you, you needed the money as well, so at the time, yes. Yeah. Uh, best they can do. Yeah, yeah, I think I worked this out before. It gives them, like, one extra reputation that same amount of points, so. 
it would only matter if he has favorite suit, but hilariously, it kind of backfires because of my hyperspecies test. <laughs> Not yes. that it really changes anything. No, the game's well and tru truly over, but yes, it was funny that they released the primate and it gave you another point from species. And yeah, they must have had bad end goals because they kept conservation projects, so they probably had climbing or aquatic or something else. Yeah. So in terms of goals, I would say that favorite zoo is hands down almost always the thing you take because yes. it just happens accidentally. You want to do the one two uni combo, it's just too good. And then you can find rep pretty much everywhere else. Even if you only get for three, it's above average compared to all the other things yes that that's probably the main complaint i have about the game just the like disparity in the end goals because favorite zoo is far and away the best and then some of them like naturalist or aquatic are just most of the time underwhelming or hard to hit naturalist is like you get points for not playing the game and it's very sad yes uh but yeah another good win um so yes, the importance of these easy projects. Don't let your opponent get both of them if they're both out, but even if there's only one out, just prioritize it very highly. Yeah, didn't even do birds for two or four. It's very... It's kind of... I think my opponent was hoping that their, their cheeky start of doing research for five would help them, but unfortunately, I leached, and on top of that, I leached way too early. So, I mean, okay, it was a very nice plan, and with Spokesperson coming out, it definitely gave them a lot of benefit, but do you think it was, like, still a mistake to go for it when there were these two easy projects out here? Um... There was a way for my opponent to not let this happen, which was to take back Cody. The coding yeah. was too important. Okay. So and they even had the opportunity to. They had cards higher, They had, but they did cards four. They didn't pass on animals to do cards five, snap the Cody. They just let me have free reign. Right, so that seemingly innocuous move was probably a game-losing move, not snapping up the yes. Cody there. Okay, very interesting. Um, I guess we can look at the opponent's starting hand and maybe see if you would have kept anything else from it. Oh, yeah. So, from what I saw, it would probably align because all that cheeky science is kind of too hard to pass up. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Um, I would... Consider the native seabirds, but oh, I wouldn't just consider it. I would 100% start native seabirds. Yeah, it helps with the birds test. It helps with the species test. There's even primatologists. Yeah, mm. you could do research with that science institute, but science institute is a blank card otherwise, and it's too costly to do both migration report and science institute and research. If you want, just do research for five round two by taking the two you need, uh, two research you need. Um, so I think in this hand, I would take native seabirds, aquarium, primatologist, and this is the tricky one. Maybe you could just do a monkey naturally. Maybe you just take the lemur to kill time. Because now, what's the fourth card? That's kind of hard. That is tough. Yeah, I think Aquarium on this map is too good for surrounding the uh, the park restaurant. I think what is also tough for my opponent is, if I were in their shoes, they could easily lose the two rep uni because I have priority, as I said. Yes. So that would mean they would have to start all the way at the top right. They would, If they did the petting zoo hook, which they did... <laughs> They would have to do the hook of uh, at the top right where there's a one rep, then take the five hand, then wrap the aquarium around the restaurant, and then, I don't know, play a sponsor with money with that leftover spot. But it's very terrible. But mm -hmm. still, 
Native seabirds, man. Yeah, especially, okay. Native seabirds with the bird icon and the species diversity seems like a, a no-brainer pick. Yeah, I think a lever over the five and just might make more sense in the end because it also contributes a con in. And also we would have too many sponsors in our hand. Okay, so it's kind of lucky for them that spokesperson showed up. Yeah, that was their salvaging plan. Maybe they were happy that I took the two rep unit anyway, or they didn't mind that much since they wanted to do research for five, but mm. ended up backfiring as we saw. Anyway, it was a very interesting game. I think we'll uh, stop it there. Yep. So thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, look forward to looking at more of your games in the future. Now that I understand them a bit better, hopefully I can read your moves easier. <laughs> Just slams down a five max. <laughs> I was laughing at you when you were so confused about why there is a five max. <laughs> it's something I've started doing now, like just spamming down five, uh, five size buildings when I don't have anything else to do. Because... Uh it doesn't always work. I had a clear plan with that condor, and then mm. the nice thing about that and that situation was, what if I find a four or five tax that needs rock or something and yes. I can flip and oh look, a rhino. <laughs> yes, that game was that game worked out very nicely. But yeah, thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. And have a good rest of the day. Alright, see you all later. See you later. Okay, hopefully that was informative for everyone in the chat. I'll end the stream there. Thanks to everyone for watching. And yeah, this was a bit of a weird time compared to the normally like Friday night time for replay analysis. So I, w I won't be doing another one tomorrow, but uh, regular stream on Sunday as usual. And see everyone there. Thanks for watching.